Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm a sixth grade reporter. Recently, I got the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel. We got to, we got to talk about the vaccine for the coronavirus. Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel is a vice provost for global initiatives at the University of Pennsylvania. He's an oncologist, an ethicist, and an author. Do you think there will be many vaccines against the coronavirus? Yes, I think we're gonna have multiple vaccines um, and we're gonna to have to early on probably make bets as to which one is more likely to work effectively against the coronavirus. Will the vaccine for COVID-19 be like the flu shot and will we need to get it yearly? We don't know. That's a very good question and it's too early to tell. It's one of the great uncertainties as to how fast the, uh, does the virus mutate um, if you give a vaccine, does it last for a lifetime the way, uh, or for a long time, if not a lifetime, many years, the way, say, getting a chickenpox vaccine or a tetanus vaccine? So you need a, a booster every so often, but you don't need to uh, get a sort of annual update, as it were. I would say if, if we have a COVID-19 situation and we need an annual update, that's probably not a good situation since, in general, Americans are not great about getting their vaccines something like two thirds of kids get a flu vaccine each year, but um, less than half uh, of adults, about 45% of adults get the vaccine every year. That's not a good result. To get immunity to something like COVID, we, we probably need to be in the 70 to 80% vaccinated level. And uh, having 45% of the adult population vaccinated just isn't gonna cut it. What are the challenges scientists are facing in developing a vaccine? Well, coronavirus uh, typically doesn't cause a great immune response. Um, this one seems to cause a sort of haywire immune response when it's given. We're also trying some new technologies, uh, RNA vaccines, that is we give uh, the RNA to the person and the person's own body reproduces a protein that the immune system responds to. Um, similarly, DNA uh, vaccine where we give the person a DNA molecule and then have the person cell create um, antibody uh, um, and an immune response to it. Those have been tried, but we've never actually um, had a full-scale antiviral vaccine work that way. We've gotten close with Zika and gotten close with something called MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, uh, but they've never been fully tested. The old methods, you take a virus, you inactivate it by heat or by uh, chemicals. Um, those methods are also being tried. Um, they're more uh, sort of old standing, but they also have a tendency to cause more um, side effects and have more safety concerns. So we're trying five different ways of doing this and uh, we'll see which one works. How long do you think it will take for society to reopen and what will our lives look like then? Well, it depends what you mean by reopen. So back to normalcy, sort of the way it was in 2019, I think we're talking about uh, 2021, 2022. Um, back to, um, you know, restaurants are open or there's a little more activity. Um, I think that's, uh, we're gonna, you know, back and forth. Uh, schools may be one of the first things to open in the fall. Uh, you going back to school instead of learning on Zoom. Yeah, so I think that uh, we also know that you're in sixth grade, right? So younger kids, you know, it's hard to do Zoom with a kindergartner or a first grader or second grader. And so there's probably gonna be some pressure to open up for them. And we're gonna be able to look at Denmark and Norway, other countries to see how having kids go back to school affects the infection rate and things like that. So, Slowly, <laughs> normal, full normalcy, what we remember from 2019 last year, that, that's still a year, year and a half away. When do you think schools will reopen and what will the first day of school be like? Uh, schools are probably gonna reopen, as I said, I think in the fall would be my bet. You're gonna have to wash your hands going in. You're probably gonna have to wash your hands five, six, seven times a day. Your desks are all gonna be spaced out. Um, if you do recess in sports and in, in PE, you're going to have to have a small group that you work with. 
to try to limit the interaction. Lunch is going to look very, very different. You probably eat lunch in your classroom would be my bet, separated out. And so maybe you can talk. You might have to all be wearing masks. I think all of that is probably like better than doing Zoom at home, I think, but still mm -hmm. pretty tough. So, all right. okay. Thank you. I learned a lot from my interview with Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel. One thing we have to remember is to be patient. There's many doctors working very hard to find a vaccine for us. Thank you for watching.